Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this video, we'll be putting some text into some sand as if it has been pressed into the sand or you know drawn in the sand with a finger. Fairly straightforward, but there are a few little tricks to make this look just exactly right. So there we go. Okay, let's start off with a brand new file. I'll just close this one down. Do brand new file, and I'll set it at the default Photoshop elements size which is 6 by 4 at a resolution of 300. Choose OK and there we go. I'll just dock this just like that. Now let's place the background image in here. File place and there we go. Now there's a link to this picture in the description. Okay, we'll place this in. There we go. And the reason I'm placing it is that it puts it and resizes it to fit the image. Now it's not quite exactly right. It's a little bit short. So I'm just going to grab the top here and pull it up just a touch. And the same thing for the bottom. Pull it down just a touch, just like that. And click on the green check mark. There it goes. There's our basic background image. Now I want to get rid of this one shell over here. It gets in the way of the lettering. And whenever I make changes on an actual image. I always make a duplicate and work on my duplicate. So let's just take this, drag it up here to the new layer button. There we go. And hide the original. That's my back backup safety. Okay, now on this, we're just going to get rid of this with a clone stamp tool. So I'll zoom in just like that. And I'll zoom out one touch here. That's good enough. And the clone stamp tool Right now mine's set at 43 pixels. Anything around there is fine. Opacity 100% soft edge, very important. Make sure you pick a soft edge brush. Those are default brushes and the soft edge ones are right down in this area here. Anything, you know, 40, 50, 60, you know, in that range would be fine for this. And I'll just grab some sand from here and just paint on top of that. So move up here, hold the Alt key down and click. There we go. And I forgot to have to simplify your layer first. Whenever you place an image in, it comes in as a smart object or a smart layer. So to simplify it, just right click on the name and choose simplify. There we go. Little icon in the corner goes away. Okay, hold down the Alt key and click to choose my clone from spot and then I'll paint over this seashell just like that and it goes away and that's taken care of. Okay, let's change our size now to fit on screen. There we go. So seashell's gone. You can see how it looks. There it is with, and there it is without. So that just cleans up that area over here. Okay, now we have that gone. We can go ahead and place in our text. And I'll set the color here at black. It doesn't matter what the color is. We'll be filling this with the sand texture anyway. And I'm using Comic Sans Bold. It's an old, old standard typeface. Most people don't use it any longer. It kind of got overused, but I think it looks nice for this kind of an effect because it looks like it's been drawn into the sand with your finger. So Comic Sand, my size is 72 point. The letting doesn't matter. The alignment doesn't matter. And let's click in here someplace. There we go. And type in seashells. And I missed my capital over there. That's easy. We'll go back and just edit that. Backspace and there we go. Not really sure why that jumped down like that. Okay, so there's these seashells. Now you can see why I got rid of that seashell right over here. At this That's where I wanted my text. And for this to work, you don't want to have it overlapping any items on the sand. It has to be working on just actual sand. So if I show the background again, see there it is. That's that shell under there. That would destroy the illusion. So I had to get rid of that shell, leaving us with just straight sand down there. Okay, so there's my basic text layer. I now need to have the text as sand. So make sure that your, your text is positioned exactly where you want. We're not going to be moving it again after this point. So get it exactly where you want, and I think right there looks good. Now, 
hold down the control key, that's the bottom left hand corner key on your keyboard, and then click on the icon, and that selects the text just like that. Okay, let's come down now to the image layer. So this selection is now actually on the image layer, and then we want to go up here to layer new via copy. And there we go. What it does is it, it copies out what's in the selection from that layer. If I hide the type layer and I'll hide everything else, you can see there we now have the text as sand. And the sand is exactly fitting on top of that image. So it, it just kind of disappears right there, which is exactly what I want. Okay, we're done with the seashells. You can now move this down. Just get it out of the way if you want so it's, it makes more sense. Now we'll be putting on a basic bevel onto this, and we'll then be using a few tricks to improve the look of that bevel. So, make sure you're on our layer. I'm going to change this here and call this one Sand 1. That's our, our first level. So just double click on the name, and you can then retype that. Okay, go up here to Layer, Layer Style, Style Settings, and we'll be doing a bevel. You can see right there, as soon as the bevel comes on, we can now see the lettering. But it's it doesn't look right. It looks looks wrong. So this first changes to down, which helps. So we have that down. And I want to change the lighting angle over to 122. Kind of pushes off to the side. Now I chose 122. See that kind of angle right there? Because that looks like the direction that the light is hitting these seashells. So I'm trying to match the angle of the light to the angle of the seashells. That's very important that you do that. Okay, now we want to play around with the bevel here. If, if it's too much, you don't see it. If, it, if it's if it go too far, it looks kind of weird. So I get just the right amount. And for this size of the lettering, I think that 12 pixels looks pretty good. So this is what we have here, just kind of a, a thin edge, a thin shadow, and then a thin highlight. Now, if you look at the seashells down here, they're lit on this side and then shadow here. So you want the opposite on our lettering. You want shadow at the top and light on the bottom, which makes it look as if it's pushed into the sand. Now, it's kind of hard to see right now. We'll be fixing that with a few more layers. So there we go. Light angle 122, bevel at 12, and direction down. Choose OK. Now, make a copy of this. Just grab this and drag it up here to the New Layer button. I'll call this one Sand 2. And then take this one and drag it underneath Sand 1, so it's down below. And we're going to be reversing that bevel. So double click where it says FX, just like that. And set this to Up instead of Down. And choose OK. So that puts the highlight at the top and the shadow at the bottom. Now I'll use the arrow keys on my keyboard. I'm just going to move this up and over a little bit. You see right there? We can now kind of see there's a little bit of a highlight up there along that top edge. So it looks as if the sand is kind of pushed up at that point and then it's down underneath after that. So a little, little highlight edge. That's what we did here. So again, let me just undo that nudge. So you first reverse the bevel from down to up and then using the arrow keys up a couple of taps over a couple of taps we will you know I'll play around with this a little bit as we go but just want just a little bit of that highlight edge showing okay now back to our sand one layer and copy it up here and duplicate it again and i'll name this one sand three there we go now we'll be using this layer to improve the look and visibility of this layer by darkening our shadows and lightening up our highlight edge. And we'll do that with a couple of tricks. I'll first come in here and change the blending mode and come down to lighten. And that lightens up that bottom edge right there. So that's kind of that, that bottom edge where the light's hitting it. So that's now lighter. I also want to darken the top edge, but since I'm lightening the layer, I can't darken it as well. I can do you know, one or the other. So we'll be darkening this by using an adjustment layer on top of this layer. So I'll go up here to Layer, 
new adjustment layer and levels and where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask make sure you have that checked and choose OK there we go now in this we have our adjustments here's the black side here's the white side here's our gray scale in the middle on this level we'll be using the black side pull the black side up until it comes in just where the black begins to really show just like that so if you watch the shadow up there's so a go back and forth down here it's kind of grayed out if I move it up into the blacks it goes black so we use the lightening of the layer to lighten up our highlights and then we're using the levels adjustment to darken down the shadow side of that so you know somewhere around 69 70 as long as you're just in where it begins to where the black begins to come up right in here that's where you want to be on that one and then just close that out there's our first level now let's do the same trick on our highlight in the background there I want to make that brighter that's on sand 2 so we're doing an adjustment layer on this one as well so layer new adjustment layer levels and make sure you check that checkbox for use previous layer to create clipping mask choose OK this time I want the that side to go lighter so I'll go to the white side over here and move the white over until the white comes in just where it begin the white begins to show right in there so and you can see it up here it's just kind of lightening up that edge now and we can close that down so we've lightened up that edge now it's too hard at this point so on this layer come down here to the sand 2 layer I want to soften that out fade that out just a little bit and we'll use a Gaussian blur on this layer leave the adjustment layer as is come down to the sand 2 layer and then filter blur Gaussian blur and I have mine set at 2 you can kind of see it right here so it's there's the original there's the blur now the sand part is all in behind the lettering so all that we're really blurring is just the highlight up along the top edge if I click on and off on the previous it's kind of subtle kind of hard to see but it just softens up that highlight up in there just makes it look a little bit more realistic and choose OK okay so our highlight looks good our edges look real nice the last thing we need to do to really sell this as being pushed into the sand is we need to darken down the letters themselves just a little bit not too much but just a little bit darkening on that so that's going to be on our sand one our first layer this is the main letter layer right here sand one same thing doing an adjustment layer on this one so layer new adjustment layer levels and again check that checkbox choose OK now this time I want to work with the midtones in here I'll leave the highlights where they are and we'll use the midtones so grab this middle one and just pull it to the right and we're going to darken down the letters notice how as I darken them down it looks more like the letters are actually pushed into the sand that's what you want to get you want to get that this kind of sense of it being pushed into the sand we're really just kind of tricking the eye on this one but somewhere around between 80 82 to 72 in that range somewhere just kind of eyeball until it works out well for you I, I think I'll set mine at 73 looks pretty nice We're just darkening it down. it also makes the lettering easier to read against the background so it's not exactly the same tone we're just darkening down the letters and there we go let's close that down and that's it we now have these letters that have been kind of pushed into or embossed into the sand if you're not quite happy with any of these settings that's why we have all these layers over here you can, you can go back and you can change these and and play around until they're exactly what you want now you may need to have different settings in here based upon the picture that you have and based upon the typeface that you use you may need to modify these a little bit use these as a starting point but then come back just double click on the icon for the adjustment layer that brings the control back up again and then you can come in here and play around with the adjustment until it's exactly what you want it maybe like 75 instead of 73 just a little bit lighter and close down if I wanted to adjust the shadow edges in there that's done with our top one up here double click brings back up that adjustment and I can then control my adjustment right here on the black side so there you go 
that's how you do the look of lettering being written into or embossed into sand. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com. You can share this video with your friends and coworkers. Just click on share and then click on the social media buttons. Feel free to comment on my videos. I try to answer all comments as quickly as I can.